Good morning, everyone. Dr. Victoria Scarbo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Today is Sunday, um, July 21st, and the moon is in Cancer. Uh, the sun is in Cancer. Today is a new moon, a solar eclipse. It actually occurred very early in the morning here on the east coast of the United States, about 2 o'clock in the morning. Of course, we did not see it because the sun is an out at 2 o'clock in the morning. This solar eclipse occurred over uh, West Africa, India, Pakistan, um, Bhutan, Nepal, uh, China, Taiwan, that area. And uh, as I've said before, uh, where the path of the solar eclipse falls, and the solar eclipse path is generally a very narrow path. I think it's something like 90 miles wide. Uh, we'll usually see big changes um, over the next um, couple of years with that. And uh, just I'm focusing in on the sweet little um, clematis that we have here. It's like a teeny tiny clematis. Um, just such a sweet little flower. And then uh, I just want to bring you over to, this, to here and uh, show you the lavender, which has just gone crazy this year. And uh, lavender is very special to me um, because uh, it was my sister Patty's favorite uh, flower. In fact, I'm going to sniff it because <laughs> I can. Oh, my God. It was her favorite, um, favorite flower. I lost my sister Patty two years ago to cancer. Um, so I'd also show you uh, Michael's garden now that it's all mulched in and beautifully uh, lined up. On the right, we have peas. Um, there's some tomatoes in there too. I think he has uh, cucumbers and eggplant, although you can't see them because the peas are so big. And the left side here is mostly um, tomatoes. And then we have the herbs here, as you can see. I've got some basil and uh, some strawberries, which unfortunately we have yet to eat a strawberry <laughs> because the chippies <laughs> come in here and steal them. <laughs> oh my God, we don't use we don't do well with strawberries. <laughs> it's like the birds eat them and stuff. All right, so that's uh, Michael's garden, and then at the end of the garden, you can see those beautiful roses. So I'm going to bring you around as we talk about this new moon eclipse. So the uh, the tightest aspect to this new moon eclipse was actually an in conjunct to um, Saturn. Um, Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn is now retrograde in Aquarius and uh, moving. It will move back into Capricorn. I believe it's in July. I think it's July 1st or July 2nd. All I know is that on my birthday, it's back in Capricorn. Uh, my birthday is July 3rd. Me and Tom Cruise, baby. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, the in conjunct to Saturn. Cancer is a, is a sign of uh, nurturance. It's a sign of family. It's a sign of taking care of people. Um, it's a security-minded sign, physical, emotional uh, security, monetary security, uh, all of those things. All of those things that are kind of up in the air for most people on the planet right now. Uh, even people who are not used to having that be the case, which is probably why it gets more attention now, unfortunately, uh, in a way that it takes, uh, you know, for the... People who generally have enough to not have enough to notice um, that there's perhaps not enough. And of course, the idea of not having enough is ridiculous because there's plenty. Uh, but the, the difference is we have to sort of decide what's essential in our lives and, and put our attention there. There's actually plenty for all of us if we just learn to cooperate, um, in some cases live with less um, and um, to what end, right? Like, how much do you really need? How many things do you really need in your life? What's essential? Well, we know, we know food is essential. Um, and of course, with everything that's going on, food will eventually um, 
it, or, and for some places it is in short supply. Um, and of course that's a cancer issue, right? Um, but, um, you know, we have to kind of look and see the way that we, uh, we have a new peony here. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, I love those little pink peonies. Um, yeah, we're going to have a reevaluation. Of course, we have to remember at this time that Venus is still retrograde, right? It's still retrograde. It's not going to go direct until the 24th. Uh, and during this time, we've been reevaluating our relationships, uh, reevaluating the way we communicate, uh, reevaluating what we know about other people and how other people live. Uh, it's been a very informative time. Uh, with the answers coming from within, as always, when things are retrograde. Of course, Mercury is retrograde right now, and it's retrograde in Cancer, um, the sign of the sun and the moon today. Um, and that's significant, too, because our minds are in a very feeling place. Our minds are in a very feeling place. And uh, I personally have a Mercury retrograde in Cancer. So on some level, I feel like the whole world is on my page Finally. <laughs> All right. So, um, so what have I learned having a Mercury in Cancer? Um, well, everything comes in uh, on the emotional sort of wave, wavelength. Um, I feel what I think. How does it feel to me? Uh, I used to have a Gemini boyfriend who used to say, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And I would say, I don't know what I think, but this is what I feel. Because my ability to think, Mercury, uh, was based in Cancer. And then Cancer retrograde, which means that I didn't know right away that I had to sort of mull things over and digest things and, and take time with them before I would make a decision. Um, which I think used to drive my Gemini boyfriend nuts and um, maybe even a little my Aries husband. Uh, <laughs> my my husband will ask me questions like let's do this what do you think of this what do you, and uh, my first my first instinct is always to say no um but then uh after i say no i think about it i think about it and generally i agree with him generally we do what he initially said but i can't make those decisions sort of off the cuff i have to put it in and it has to sort of ruminate in my head it doesn't always doesn't take a long time but it takes that sort of stepping back and uh, trying to figure out what it is that you're really feeling and how does it really feel? How, how, how can you um, sort of filter that? And so I feel like I can say that <laughs> for sure um, and give you an idea of, of what it's like now. <laughs> so that's kind of what it's like. And I'm sure some of you are also sort of feeling that as well. So I'm moving you, I'm walking back into the back 40 here. It's just so lush. I don't know how long I'll be able to stay because once you walk in this grass, the mosquitoes go, hey, lunch. Um, but all of these, these are all wild roses here um, and, ras and um, blackberries. Yeah, uh, we do have to do some, <laughs> some work here, but it is actually, it's, it's lovely. And let me tell you, it smells terrific back here. Boy, it smells terrific. Yeah, if you're ever wondering what this was in the background, that's our burn pile. But um, <laughs> the other day, Michael said, hey, it's it looks like a giant nest. So now instead of a burn pile, uh, we call it an art installation <laughs> until uh, we can burn. <laughs> then it will no longer be an art installation. Let me see if I can bring you back here. If you guys don't get back here, if I can do this. I'm wearing uh, my, my nightie, so it's a little prickly back here. I'll see how far I can get before I give up. Uh, what is this in front of us? That's a rose. Let me move that. <laughs> yeah, these are all the roses. They're lovely. I'm going to sniff while you, uh, while you look. Yeah, it smells great. Oh my goodness. But these are wild and these do take over. And eventually we want to put a meditative garden back here. So I think eventually a lot of these are going to have to go. Uh, but they'll continue to grow around the perimeter. Yeah, lovely. Oh, look, another art installation. 
Okay, sorry. Oh my god. So, this eclipse is a very powerful eclipse. It's powerful because it's occurring at a cardinal point. Um, the last time uh, this, this happened at this point uh, was 2001. And we know what happened later that year. And that's the point I want to make. Uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of us were concerned about um, the rally that Trump was having in Tulsa for many reasons. It ended up not working out as he thought. A lot less people. Um, I guess he thought that they would brave um, a pandemic and possible rioting uh, for the love of him, but that didn't happen, luckily. Um, and so we can all sort of take a collective deep breath. Uh, but it doesn't mean that things are going to uh, not get uh, challenging because um, the the uh, the point of the of the eclipse is sensitive for a while. So uh, just because it didn't happen on the day of the eclipse doesn't mean that we're not going to be challenged. And with all these issues of safety and nurturance and taking care of one another and taking care of the family. Um, and I'm going to bring you over now, hopefully without falling into one of Boo's old um, holes that he liked to dig. And, not, and I didn't always know where they were uh, to see this uh, flame. Um, honeysuckle. Just lovely. It just like glows. I love that. Probably why they call it flame. Oh, and there's one more flower I want to show you that I don't think you guys have seen. Just to look where I'm going here. All right. And it's right over here. We have some clematis back here that are just so lovely. But they're kind of hidden. They're like a hidden gem. <laughs> Excuse everything you have to see. There they are. See them? They're lovely. Oh my god, they're so pretty. Yeah. This is, uh, that's Boo's bed. Boo and Gretchen's bed back here. I'm gonna, I think, give it to a, um, a place, oh god, rescue organization. And this here, I, you know, maybe you're not interested in this, but I just think it's amazing. This fell off the maple tree. And uh, I feel like it was a gift. And look, see the holes? Um, I think that's 